After two decades of being trapped in a labyrinth of bureaucracy and strategic indecision, the Indian Air Force finally made a definitive, pragmatic choice in December 2025. The Defense Acquisition Council, operating under the Ministry of Defense, officially gave the green light to a program valued at 905 million US dollars. New Delhi did not choose the path of luxury by purchasing brand new aircraft fresh from the factory line. Instead, they opted for a route of ruthless efficiency by selecting Israel Aircraft Industries, or IAI. Their mission is clear to transform used civilian Boeing 767 passenger jets into strategic military assets known as the Multi-Mission Tanker Transport, or MMTT. This decision was not made overnight. Rather, it is the culmination of operational desperation, meeting the harsh reality of a suffocating budget. Since 2006, the narrative surrounding India's tanker acquisition has been dominated by the Airbus A330 MRTT. Technically speaking, the European platform was the undisputed champion, consistently favored by the generals in New Delhi for its cutting-edge technology. However, every time negotiations reached the final stage, the Indian Ministry of Finance slammed the brakes. A package for six brand new Airbus tankers was estimated to cost over $2 billion, a figure deemed too extravagant for a nation that must simultaneously modernize its army and navy under tight fiscal constraints. This is where IAI entered the picture as the middle path, offering a solution that makes sense both militarily and economically. With a budget of less than $1 billion, India can secure capabilities that are nearly equivalent to the European option, but at a fraction of the cost. The program involves acquiring Boeing 767s from the civil aviation market, planes that may have previously carried tourists or commercial cargo, and handing them over to Israeli engineers to be completely stripped down, structurally reinforced, and militarized. In the Indian Air Force's deep dive assessment, this platform offers the intercontinental range that is absolutely critical for projecting air power, especially when facing the potential nightmare scenario of a two-front conflict against Pakistan and China simultaneously. The conversion process involves high-level engineering, far beyond simply bolting on extra fuel tanks. IAI has emphasized the installation of a modern, adaptive hose and drogue refueling system. This specific feature is vital because the Indian Air Force's inventory is a logistical puzzle. They operate a mixed fleet, Russian-made Sukhoi Su-30 MKIs, French-made Rafales, aging Jaguars, and the indigenous Tejas. A rigid tanker system would be useless here. India requires universal flexibility to service all these different customers at operational altitudes, and IAI has promised this interoperability without significant technical hurdles. Beyond its primary function as a flying gas station, the multi-mission label on this aircraft is not just marketing fluff. These planes are reconfigured to become robust strategic transport assets. In crisis scenarios, such as escalating tensions on the Himalayan border or natural disasters in the Indian Ocean region, the 767 MMTT can switch roles rapidly. It is designed to transport large numbers of troops, carry heavy logistical cargo, or even be converted into a flying intensive care unit for mass medical evacuation missions. This mission flexibility is exactly why the Ministry of Defense felt confident signing such a large contract for used platforms. The geopolitical and industrial aspects of this deal are also heavily calculated. India is not just buying a finished product, they are buying into the technology. Under the Make in India and Atma Nid Barbara doctrines, this contract mandates a 30% local content requirement. This is a smart maneuver by New Delhi to force technology transfer and involve the domestic defense industry in the global supply chain. Local Indian industries will be involved in assembly, component supply, and long-term maintenance, which will directly upgrade their national technical capabilities. The involvement of Israel here also reinforces the increasingly intimate defense relationship between New Delhi and Tel Aviv, cementing Israel as a strategic partner that fills the gaps left by other nations. 
This decision was born from a state of emergency that had become critically dangerous. The Russian-made IL-78 Midas tanker fleet, which currently forms the backbone of India's refueling capability, is aging rapidly and frequently suffers from spare parts shortages, resulting in alarmingly low availability rates. The situation became so urgent that in 2025, the Indian Ministry of Defense was forced to wet lease a KC-135, complete with crew and maintenance, from a third party. This leasing arrangement was executed solely to train Indian Air Force and Navy pilots, ensuring their air-to-air -air refueling proficiency didn't evaporate while waiting for the 767 fleet to arrive. This is clear evidence that India could not wait any longer. The gap in their strategic capability had become too wide to ignore. Despite the optimism, valid criticisms remain primarily because India will be one of the few operators of this specific variant in the world. To date, the IAI converted 767 MMTT has only one confirmed operator, the Colombian Air Force, which has flown their Jupiter aircraft since 2010. Although Jupiter has proven its reliability in international exercises like Red Flag, being the only major user alongside Colombia places India in a unique logistical position compared to if they had chosen the A330, which is used by many NATO nations. However, India is betting on the massive global availability of civilian Boeing 767 spare parts to keep long-term maintenance costs low, an advantage that purely military aircraft simply do not possess. When compared deeply, Airbus's failure in this tender is purely a matter of economic calculation versus tactical need. The Airbus A330 MRTT does offer superior performance, larger cargo capacity, and a longer lifespan as a new airframe. But for Indian military planners, paying over $2 billion for just six support aircraft was a luxury they could not justify. By choosing the modified used Boeing 767 option, India is applying the principle that quantity has a quality of its own. The savings from this deal allow India to allocate funds to other critical sectors, such as the acquisition of fifth-generation fighter jets or the modernization of their submarine fleet. Now the program enters the execution phase, which is fraught with technical challenges. A joint team from India and Israel must move quickly to scour the global civil aviation market to find suitable airframes. Selecting used aircraft for conversion is an art form. They must find units with enough remaining flight hours and structures free from deep corrosion or metal fatigue. A mistake in selecting the initial units could be fatal for future operational costs. Furthermore, the conversion schedule must be strictly monitored to avoid the delays that plague so many Indian defense projects. Ultimately, this deal is a carefully calculated strategic gamble. India has sacrificed the prestige of owning brand new aircraft in exchange for obtaining functional, affordable operational capabilities quickly. They are placing their full trust in Israeli engineering expertise to turn aging civilian metal into effective war machines. If this project succeeds, India will possess a tanker fleet capable of supporting their ambitions to become the dominant power in South Asia and the Indian Ocean. But if it fails, the IAF will once again be plunged into a logistical crisis that severely limits their striking range. So what do you think about the news above? Let me know.